Ladies and gentlemen, haven't talked to Weston in a while, but he's fighting June 15th. So, Weston Wilson, how you doing, man? Doing good. Doing good. A lot better than uh, my last fight. So, <laughs> well, well, we'll get in with that. We'll start with that in a second. But I do want to tease for the audience. We may have a uh, little surprise guest. And it might not be a surprise if it happens because I'll put it in the caption. But regardless, Weston, you know, what you've been up to, like you said, last fight didn't necessarily go your way back in January, but I know you're constantly training. I actually met you at Cage Fury since then. So what you yeah. been up to? Uh, well, I've been helping a lot of our guys get ready for fights. Um, I kind of reevaluated a few things, uh, went back to the lab, if you will. And uh, we've been adjusting some things stylistically, focusing more on on strengths, less on, on weaknesses. Um, so... You know, we, we tightened up the defense a little bit. Um, the other major thing is my walking weight. We've got it down. Um, in between fights, I had bulked up. Uh, I'd gotten up to like 180, which is really, really big for me. Yeah. So we, we've got the weight down. So I'm not starting my camp so heavy. So I'm not having to like start the weight cut or, or the dieting down for as long either so um i think that definitely had like played into it was just the amount of weight i cut for that fight was pretty big yeah that's, <clears throat> i know that's there's a lot more but for a guy with like a six one frame at 145 pounds that's a lot for me oh yeah no that's a lot of weight man especially to people who don't train and don't really understand how hard it is like that's that's insane man so Glad you're getting all that figured out. And, you know, obviously, man, like you're looking for that first win with the promotion. Well, let me ask two questions here. One, how many do you have left on your contract? And two, like, is this more of a must win for you now than ever before? Like, how are you looking at this fight perspective wise? Um, Yeah, so like I don't fight for the money. Like I make good money outside of cage fighting. Um, right. So. In terms of like financially, like I don't, it's not like, oh, my, my, you know, my life depends on it. Sure. Uh, but in terms of what I want for myself and, and my life, uh, yeah, my life depends on it. Um, like my legacy and, and everything like that. I, I definitely like for me, it's a must win. I have two fights left, this one and one more. Um, but I, you know how the UFC is sometimes if you lose that one, they're going to just let you go and not let you finish out your contract. Um, and for what I want to do, like going, uh, oh shoot, I can't talk about what I was going to talk about. Well, then we'll skip <laughs> but over for what it. I want, tease me more. For what I want, there, there's a, a, a fight in October I'd really like. Um, and, and so or, or, you know, I, I would like there's a certain fight in the fall I would I'd really like um, or fight card in the fall. I'd really like mm, I, get, uh, I get what you're getting at. So. I I kind of am in that I have to win in order to get that 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 fight in the fall. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, for me, it's it's like do or die. And then the other thing is like I definitely would love to like get a couple wins and get a, a tops trading card you know i'd I mm. like to have a, a top trading card. So that's one of my goals so like everything for me is like more legacy based like it's not like the financial incentives it's more like i want like the cool stuff that you know my my kids my grandkids like everybody can like see um so yeah like i definitely want to win a couple fights and, and have like the trading card i i, I definitely want to fight uh in the fall um, and so I think in order to fight in the fall, I have to win this one, but I think this matchup is, is a really good matchup. It's a change of pace in terms of like I fought three tough striker or I'll have fought three tough strikers, but I think his style of striking versus like the last two, um, are more like his style is more what I like to fight against versus like the last two guys. I don't, I don't really like to fight against that style of striking. I know it's going to sound like everyone's going to think it's weird but there's little nuances that he does that that the other two guys don't do um that i like so i think uh stylistically this matchup i i prefer over the last two and before i ask you more about jekka in a second just because you're bringing him up um you know you you said something there about a card and i know you can't really talk about it you said but 
basically what I'm getting at. Is that location based? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I, I think <laughs> I've heard said, enough. I should have said anything because it's no, you didn't even, say anything. It's not even. Yeah. Anyways. No, you're uh, good. I, fighters have told me before, like, yeah, dude, I heard a card's coming here. And like, you know, I mean, it's, you know, our rumblings are rumbling. Sometimes it's true. Sometimes it's not, but we'll leave it at that. I don't need to pry much more. I was just curious yeah. about, I, I didn't know if it was a fighter or a location, but you said, you said no, it it's, right it's definitely location based. Like, like they're going to go somewhere that I want to, I want to fight at and it makes sense for me to fight there um so we'll see we'll see if it happens uh but i definitely i have to win this one or i have to at least put like a super exciting performance on um but i mean i think it's more like i have to win that that's my mindset going into it is that you know that it's it's do or die you have to you have to come out on top of this one regardless and let's talk about Jekka because, you know, he has a lot of hype. Uh, you know, you, you look him up on Twitter. Everybody's talking about this Jekka guy. He's an exciting fighter. He's had some success so far. You said you liked this fight. So how are you viewing this fight stylistically? And what are your thoughts on Jekka? Um, so I know he's very, very heavy handed, but he also uh, is susceptible to the counter. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the Lucas Alexander fight, Lucas Alexander was was beating him um rocked him with a couple heavy shots uh and then i i forget how they went to the ground but then as lucas was getting up he just made a rookie mistake and got up and turned his back and jekka came in and just caught him with that that overhand right at the the right moment um but if you look at jekka's fight against jubilee you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of holes in his game, and I'm just as big, if not bigger, than Jubilee. Um, and my grappling is probably better than Jubilee's. Uh, so I think you know, like it's it's not a secret. Like I'm going to take Jika down. I'm going to wear him out on the ground. I mean that if you look at all of his losses and where all of his struggles are, that's that's where they've all been. Um, I think he's only got one submission win and the rest are knockouts or decisions. So that's, that's the game plan. Just, you know, slip counter, get inside and take him down and take him into deep waters. And do you like that? He has some, like I mentioned, hype behind him, because I don't know, in my opinion, like from a fan's perspective, even a win over a hype machine goes a long way. Yeah, I think, I think it, it's, it's cool, you know, um, I'm not looking too much into it. Like, I think a lot of his hype is just the fact that he's the only Indonesian based fighter. So he's got like all of Southeast Asia behind him. Um, and, and so it's not necessarily like the hype I care about. Like, it's not like American fans know him. It's not like, you know, the, the crowd that is going to follow me and, and is going to get behind me, like knows who he is. So um, but it is interesting. I, I we were talking about this with the foreign fighters. Like when you fight the foreign fighters, you get so many crazy hate messages on social media from people in that country. That's crazy. and I was like, and like me fighting, you know, a Brazilian or me fighting a, um, you know, an Indonesian. Like you're not gonna have a ton of Americans like messaging that fighter and being like right. you suck you're gonna die you know but like I'll, I'll wake up to at least two three times a week i'll wake up and and check my phone and see i've got these instagram messages being like you're gonna die we're just gonna rip your head off you suck <laughs> like just all sorts of like crazy hate messages and, and so like, it's, it's funny because like americans are you know internationally we're known as like a-holes and everything like that but on social media I'm, our american <laughs> fans are not the ones talking trash and, and like saying like horrific things um that fans of foreign fighters are are saying so it, it is funny um I, I actually i just a lot of the times i just ignore it now i'm just like okay cool thanks you know <laughs> appreciate it i was curious about that because you're like the nicest guy in the world pretty much so like do you ever respond do you ever feed into that no not really like i i just I like the first few times it, it definitely messed with me mentally. Um, and, and so finally I turned off notifications on, on Instagram 
uh, and, and Twitter because it's just, it gets, it gets wild, man. Like it's absolutely wild. And even like, I'll even have Americans hit me up just saying, uh, how much I suck and, you know, I deserve to die and things like that. Like it's crazy. Uh, I, I saw somebody recently saw one eighty five er in the UFC posted, like he did a screenshot of like all of his, all of his hate comments and I was like, okay, like his are way worse than mine. So I was like, at, at least like I'm not the only one. But like it's 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 pretty funny like how these fans will just talk the most trash they possibly can. I mean, it's interesting because you know before I got into media and really covering the sport, I was one of the guys on Twitter who was just like a fan and talk fights and all that. And I know for a fact I've seen it in the flesh. People will talk so much shit on Twitter, and then. We'll see the fighter in person and say, hey, Weston, can I get a picture? It's just, it blows my mind, man. People are insane. Yeah, no. It, yeah, I haven't had any in-person interactions you never will. like that. You never will. Um, but definitely social media, like, it's it's wild. And it was funny because, like, I was talking to Steven. He was saying, like, for the shop hot fight, he would post something. And then, like, within minutes uh he would have all these kazakhstan like comments and they weren't all like bad you know but like there would just be like a bazillion comments from kazakhstan or like the kazakhstan flag, the flag and stuff yeah. like that and and uh so we, we were laughing about it like i have i i've turned off comments so i most of the time when i post something i don't even see the comments anymore because they became a distraction um and and even like i've gotten like really good at not taking like a whole lot of like stock in what people say but uh like i just don't even want to waste the the energy like thinking about it and being like oh man like i gotta you know i gotta think about you know or i just ignore it or like because sometimes those thoughts like those comments like creep into your head like i i remember <laughs> after my last fight uh there was like six guys all were getting into a huge fight on my comment thread on a post that was like six, seven months old. They got into this huge fight about how I'm the worst fighter assigned to the UFC and yada, yada, yada. And, and it was great because there was like half of the, half of the six guys were like defending me. The other half were just ripping me to shreds. And then they start ripping those guys, defending me to shreds. Uh, and, and to be fair, I don't know any of them. Like, I, I didn't know any of them. I, I know, like, my friends and family and stuff, like, they, they would defend me. But um, I don't even like when my friends and families comment to, like, try to defend me. But it was it was pretty funny. Like, people were like, oh, he's awful. And then I had somebody who was like, he's more successful in, like, two or three ventures than you are even in one. And, and so, like, I like it made me happy that there are That's good great. Samaritans on social media who – don't let negativity rain through and and so i i did i i think i privately messaged a couple of those guys like hey man i appreciate you know the the love and support and and defending me you know on these comment threads like you know good good for you guys um but typically like my response to most people just like thank you like even if even like good negative or or positive it's it's always like you know thank you i appreciate the support and I think the negative people, it pisses them off. Like, I'm like, hey, thanks, man. I appreciate the support, you know? And, and it, it just makes them mad that I don't let it affect me anymore um, if I do respond. But yeah, usually I don't even respond to comments. Well, from my perspective, if you have haters, you're famous. So congratulations, <laughs> Weston. You made it, my man. <laughs> and uh, I'm just I'm not, not, no, not famous to the extent of, of some of these fighters. I, I can only imagine like Wonder Boy or even uh oh yeah like Chris Weidman, a couple of guys that I, I really close to, like the amount of craziness that they get. Even like going out to like uh like a restaurant or something, like when it's even I go out to restaurants, the amount of like people coming up and, and hey, can I get a picture? Hey, can I get a picture? You know. Cool. Uh and, and he never is like mean about it, never, you know. Uh, lately he's always like, Oh, my buddy Wes, he's in the UFC too. Take a picture with him as well. And I, I'm like, I'm, I'm more of an introvert than he is. And I'm more like, mm. uh, <laughs> <hey>. <laughs> <laughs> thanks man. appreciate it. You know, but like I, yeah, I'm, I'm more of a, I, I prefer to be low key just out of the, out of sight. 
Well, Wonder Boy's he's he's like a top, I don't know, 10, 15 star in the UFC. So that's yeah, that's definitely. a different level of fame, too. Um and Weston, man, with, with a big win here, like what's next? I guess you, you said your eye in a card in October, but more so for your career, like what goals do you have left in the UFC in fighting? Um, you know, I, I feel like I haven't gotten to show like what I'm really capable of. Like I'm really fun on the ground. I'm really like I can, depending on, on the striker, like that I can do a lot of crazy stuff striking wise. Um, it's just getting comfortable. I think, uh, I'm finally like used to the apex. Uh, so being able to fight in the apex now is like not a bother. Like I definitely am somebody though. I feed off of the crowd. Um, getting to have my parents at this next one and my my wife mm. and my brother it's going to be a really exciting time like getting to fight in front of them um so at least like i get i there's people i'm going to know in the crowd uh and i'll be able to hear in the crowd that last fight like it was just crazy because there was nobody like it was just silent and and it's kind of weird fighting in like absolute silence like that um so this this time like around getting like I'm not looking at it as a negative like I was I was kind of negative going into the fight in January because like oh man I'm stuck in apex like I don't get to fight in front of a crowd um and I'm like the first fight card of the year so I gotta like cut weight during Christmas and, and New Year's this fight like I'm definitely a lot more positive I'm definitely not like feeling any negativity like even it's the apex. Like it, it doesn't bother me. Like I'm, I'm excited to go to the apex and that smaller cage kind of leans into my strategy. Um, so like, there's a lot of positives and, and, you know, good things about it. So I'm like, camp's a lot better. Like there's, there's, I'm not like in that constant battle of, of negativity. Like I come in, I'm positive about everything. Like, Oh yeah, we're going to go, we're going to rock and roll, we're going to win, you know? So everything's like super positive. Um, this fight camp and and uh actually steven's gonna actually be in my corner this fight too so it'll be the first time steven's been in my corner in a while um he shook the broken leg curse that he he had uh yeah he chris white he was in chris wyman's and chris broke his leg and then i broke my leg the first and only time steven's ever been in my my corner i broke my leg as well um and so we were, we were joking that steven like got a broken leg curse but uh broken rabbit's he, foot yeah yeah uh you know he shook that when uh weidman when he cornered weidman at uh ufc atlantic city so he's now allowed to be back in the corner now <laughs> let's go let's go congratulations um, yeah yeah so that that broken leg curse is, is shook it's not there anymore um now it's it'll be fun though. We're 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 both excited. Um, you know, and and this time too, it's nice because Wonderboy doesn't have a fight coming up. So mm -hmm. uh the last couple of times it's been like Wonderboy's in fight camp and I'm in fight camp. And so we're kind of in fight camp together. So it's like we're the the attention's divided. Um but this time it, it's not. And so that's the the positive is like I get all the attention for, for my fight. Um, and Wonder Boy's going into it as if he's got a fight coming up, but like there's, you know, so it, it's nice because the the whole team, you know, like everybody gets behind you and, and not everybody like worrying about themselves. And, and so uh, it, it's nice to have that where I get to just focus on myself and, and my fight. And then you're at upstate right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I just finished teaching uh, jujitsu. So, is uh, Wonder Boy around? Is he there yet? Uh, I, I he's got chores he's got to do. Oh, I don't. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't like matter. That. I was just wondering. Um, yeah. I, mean, I, I don't know. He he's he was up front, but. Well, if he pokes uh, his head in before we get out of here, he can come on by. If not, no worries. Yeah. Very happy enough talking to you, Weston. And I. That's really what I wanted to end with. I wanted to end asking about just training with Wonder Boy and the Thompsons and Upstate. You guys are an incredible gym, a lot of influence on the East coast and really all throughout MMA. So just talk to me about how you guys train and what the vibes like there. Yeah. Um, so it, it's been interesting since my last fight, uh, we, well, before my last fight, we started bringing in, uh, Tony Stevens brother. Um, 
and having him help coach a lot. Uh, he's got a really good like mind, very like analytical, very um, like he's like a happy medium between Steven and Coach T. Like Coach T is very hard nosed, very you know old school, um, and and Steven's more like oh yeah you know like it's all right just as long as you get to work and have fun and everything. Uh, Tony's like that happy medium where he's like he expects you to work hard. But then, you know, uh, he's not like completely like hard nose where you feel like you're useless at, at the end. Um, I, I, I actually really like that, like hard nose that Coach T pushes out of me. Um, so it's, it's nice, though, because like it rotates between them. So like the days where you need that extra pigment, you got Coach T yelling at you. And then like the days where you, you don't want that and you like are exhausted, you got Steven or Tony like pushing you um and, and you feel a lot better about yourself <laughs> <laughs> um so it's it's a good vibe like it, it's all like a really really good you know vibe. and then we've i've got uh gino morelli who he was a penn state all-american mm -hmm. um so we're working a ton of wrestling uh and, and able to really put that work in on on the mats as well um and, and patch up a couple things like grappling wise um, I'm actually going to be heading out to California uh, in a couple of weeks and going to go train with Jeeva Santana, who was just in Alex Perez's corner. Um, Alex and I used to train together out in California. Word. Uh, so I was, I was stoked for his win. That was awesome. Big one. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he needed it to. It couldn't have come at a better time. Uh, you know, do, does the UFC a favor taking a short notice fight and then also winning emphatically like that with the. Um, with the TKO. Well, actually, no, it was a knockout. It was one punch. Oh, he was out. Um, yeah. So winning with the knockout like that, definitely like uh, against a top five talent who was on it, who was on a pretty decent streak too. I think how, how many wins did Nicolau have? I'm on like, tap biology. Give me a second. I think three or four, three or four, at least. Yeah. Started with cap, I believe. Mateus Nicolau. Let's see. Where's good old sure dog or tapology? Tapology's first. They got the better, uh, the better, uh, they got the better user face. Oh, he was on a four fight win streak and then he lost to, uh, Brandon Hoyvel. That's right. Oh, Nick Lau lost to Royval? Yeah. On, uh, in, in back last April, April 15th. But before that, he was on, uh, four fights, starting with Cap and then Tim Elliott, David Dvorak, Matt Schnell. Yeah, I saw the Matt Schnell fight because uh, that was in Orlando when Stephen fought. I think. Let's see. Let's let's see if you're right. Let's see if you're trivia. It's right. Good job, trivia. Yeah, yeah. I saw I saw Nick Lau versus Schnell because Schnell almost didn't make weight. Schnell had to shave his head. Oh um, yeah, that's right. Love the way in uh, drama, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was there for that that whole thing. Um. Yeah, no, I, I was super, super, super happy for, for Perez. Um, but, yeah, so I'll be going out to train with Jiva um, in just May 10th through the 4th, uh, 14th. So just a short little trip. It's also, you know, uh, my wife and I's anniversary, so we're kind of work. going and, and spending our anniversary out there and, you know, getting to – train as well so it'll be good um all part of like like i said like the whole vibe for this training camp is just a lot different um you know like just having everybody here uh not having steven in fight camp you know it, it it's just it, like i get to be a little bit more selfish when you share fight camp like you don't get to be as selfish like you, you uh are dividing your time helping everybody else right. um getting everybody else ready, you know, especially like when Steven's got fight camp, like we go all in and, and help Steven and you do get a lot. Like, it, it's not like it's just a one way road. Like, Oh, I'm just helping Steven. Like when, when you're helping somebody with a fight camp, like you get a lot back. Um, but like, it's much better for your body <laughs> to, yeah. not, to be like the one in fight camp than uh, sharing a fight camp, you know? Uh, so it, it definitely like in the vibe, it, it's just, it's good. Like, everybody's on the same page we've got a lot of our amateurs fighting actually uh in two weeks and and five weeks so may 11th and 25th okay. so like basically our whole fight team is going to fight on those two cards 
Um, and then after that, you know, it'll be me and uh, we're trying to get Gino Morelli a fight as well. So it'll, you know, it, it's nice because I, I get a lot of the the focus, a lot of the, okay, game plan, you know, practice is going to be centered around what West needs to work. So it, it, it's good in, in that regard. Like it, it makes you feel, makes you feel special. <laughs> oh, totally, dude. And I'm excited to see how it all works or how it all works out. Like the refined camp, all the focus on you. It's the Weston Wilson house right now, man. And I'm very excited to see it play out. And Weston, before I get you out of here, bro, one more, not even a question, just for you. If you have anything to say to all your fans and all the people watching this interview, the mic is yours, man. Take it away. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know what? The road to getting on one of those tops trading cards starts June 15th. Uh, so hopefully I put on a, a good enough performance that tops puts me on a, a trading card on their next batch. <laughs> and if you get the win, you got you got to take the mic and call them out. You know, that'll do it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm definitely uh, my call is going to be tops trading cards. So that's me who I want to fight next. I'm going to be like, I don't care as long as it gets me on the tops trading card. <laughs> You heard him. Let's get this man a trading card. Weston Wilson, June 15th, UFC. Thank you so much, my man. Kick some ass, and uh, we'll talk soon, okay? Appreciate it. Thanks, Jake.